the topic for this evening, if you want to write it down, is going to be there is hope in your future. Okay, that's if you want to write down there is hope in your future. Okay, I'm just letting everything get connected up, and um, and and and, and we're going to get started. Now. I think everything is connected now. That's set. That's set. Yes, that's all good. Okay. Okay. So here we go. I think I have all the pieces. 31, what was it? Okay, it's Jeremiah. Tonight we're going to be studying from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. And we're going to take a look at, or rather, we're going to study verses 15 through 22. It's good to see all of you, as well as to see people who are online. Um, Facebook and all different places, but I want to make sure we get started. And as people get on, I'll do my best to let everybody on. Um, but it's again, it's good to see you. Everyone, I want to open us, uh, I'll open us up in prayer tonight. Um, Sister Kristen, could you read the verses for this evening? Um, yeah, what'd you say? 15 to what? 22. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be looking at verses 15 to 22 in the book of Jeremiah. Um, chapter 31. I want to open us up in prayer and then we're going to get started tonight. And again, for those who are watching us on Facebook, our um, topic for tonight is there is hope in your future. Um, or you can even ask, is there hope in your future? And I'm going to tell you already, yes, with an exclamation point, but there's hope in your future. We're going to be in the book again of Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 15 through 22. Let us pray. Lord God, we just thank you again for another opportunity to come together, to gather um, virtually, Lord God, as we seek to study the scriptures, Lord God. We know, as it says in the gospel of Luke in chapter 24, that, that, when, we, that when we search the scriptures, we see the scriptures point all the prophets, all of scripture points to you um, as the as our Messiah, as our Lord and our Savior, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you that the word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. We thank you, Lord God, that your word we can hide in our heart that we may not sin against you. So, Lord God, we ask you to give us focus this evening. Um, um, help us to be able to pay attention, Lord God. Speak to our heart and our mind that not only do we um, gain knowledge, and understanding of your scriptures, but we can also properly apply it in our lives. Please bless our time together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, we're in Jeremiah 31, verses 15 through 22. Um, Kristen, would you please read those to us? Yes, I can. I'm reading the NIV. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of your enemy. So there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's moaning. You discipled me like an unruly calf, that I have been discipled. Restore me and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breast. I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim my dear son? the child in whom I delight. Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion for him, declares the Lord. Set up road signs, put up guard posts, take note on the highway, the road that you take. Return virgin Israel, Return to your towns. How long will you wander, unfaithful daughter Israel? The Lord will mm -hmm. recreate a new thing on mm -hmm. earth. The woman will return to the man. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I don't know if 
any of you all remember back in 2016, around, it was around December or somewhere that um, Michelle Obama was being interviewed, the former first lady, and she was being interviewed by Oprah. And um, there was a point and, you know, they were talking about a lot of things, you know, what her life was like in the White House and as they were preparing the transition, it was, you know, after it, it was about a month after the election of 2016. And there was a point in the interview where um, Michelle said, you know, this is what not having hope feels like. She started talking about hope. I remember. And, and, and she even, and then she talked at one point, um, another point, she said, I don't know what people would do without hope. You know, um, that, 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 that she was trying to make this point about something about hope. And, um, and when we don't have hope, how it can put us in some places that are not good. And, and, and so I, I wanted us to talk a little bit before we get into the passage tonight is about hope. And, and why is hope so important? And what's the difference, or, or better yet, what's the difference in having hope and not having hope? How well, you react, not, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, you go ahead, Crystal. How you react to like trials and tribulation, if you have hope, you know that at some point, I mean, God's there for you no matter what, but at some point you will find peace no matter what happens. If you do not have hope, kind of like what I said yes last week, people go a little crazy and um, you will get sad, you will get, you could get depressed, but these people get extreme. They don't see any end to the outcome of what it's gonna happen. Hmm. You don't see there's no end. You don't think there's no end in sight. When you don't have hope and when you have challenges, if I'm understanding what you just said, Sister Christian, is that you, you, pe people don't even see any end in sight. You know, this, mm -hmm. is, this is just how it's going to be. It's always been this way. This is the way it's going to be. It, it can never get better. Right. Um, and and, and <laughs> any, anybody else? And it um, also makes one feel helpless. Mm -hmm. Like there's no way out. There's nobody coming to save them or to advise them or guide them or help them. Or, you know, like you all said, it, they don't see it just as a temporary thing that we go through, but one that we trust you know, then the Lord that he will give us the strength and stamina and perseverance. But when you don't have any hope, you just feel helpless. And sometimes it can cause really crazy things like suicide. Um, cause you to make some bad decisions that you would otherwise, you know, probably if you were hopeful, you would, you know that there is a Tomorrow, you know, that's the, that song we had, you know, that we used to sing, check it up at, uh, well, Reverend Hot Town. Oh, <laughs> over at the it, church it, by. It, uh, way to <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> we, uh, uh, when we, you know, especially when we believe in, in Jesus, you know, we know there's a tomorrow. So because we believe we can face it, we can face it tomorrow. And then mm -hmm. a lot of times people mm -hmm. can't face tomorrow, don't have hope. They don't even want tomorrow to come. They just want to just throw the towel in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful song. It is. I love it. We've yeah. sang it before at our church, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We used to sing it in the Methodist church when uh, he was growing up. We still sing it now. They are the adult choir sing it. Yes. Yeah, 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 you can face tomorrow. That's hope. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, like I said, you make bad decisions. You know, so, so, so hope is connected to um, our trust in God. True, true hope. You, the only thing you're really hoping is God. It will never let you down. And hope is connected to our trust in God or our faith, right? We know, as it says in 
what what is it hebrews um chapter 11 right it, it, it says what in the book of hebrews in chapter 11 now faith, faith, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen right mm -hmm. hebrews 11 1 isn't it there you go that's Hebrews 11, 1. Thank you, thank you, Sister Donna. And this, it, it, notice what it says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence of, of things not seen. So how do I hope, how do I have evidence of something I can't see? That's part of faith. Faith is first how substance of something is hoped for. It'll happen in the future. But also, faith is also the evidence of things not seen. How can I have faith, have trust in something that's not seen? How do I get evidence of something I'm not seeing? Because we, we know evidence generally is based on what? What you can what? What you see. What you see and touch. <laughs> so, so, so what <laughs> evidence not seen? How, how does that work? Kind of like our testimonies of our being able to talk about each one of our trial and tribulations and we get the results are for our good. So Jesus does what's for our good, no matter what. So every time we go through something, we can tell others, especially people who don't know Jesus, how he's good. He, mm -hmm. Even through the most and horrible things you go through. Yes. And okay. then, you know, we oftentimes have, uh, uh, encounters in our lives that we know good and well we didn't get through that by mm -hmm. anything of our own you know you mm -hmm. just it, I guess it's like miracles they happen all the time but there are so many things even now you know just looking at me now I'm retired there is no way that I could have raised three children, real smart, successful children, healthy children, and then be able to be self-sufficient and, and, and be able to, to come and serve <clears throat> as I do, you know, and I, my faith is getting stronger and stronger. There is no way that I could have gotten to where I am now by anything on my own, uh, even man. That had to be God. It had to be God because, you know, technically, statistics, none of this was supposed to happen. You weren't supposed to be successful. You, you handsome, you smart, and you have a single mama. You were raised by a single mama. There is no way that this all could have happened by anything <clears throat> now, without yeah. God. Now, 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 and notice she's she's talking on the other side of the mound now. She's because she said she's giving the the, the testimony and, and, and graciously, you know, because you know, with growing up and having the three kids, and um, you know, that was some work. And I did some work for her as I look back and as we raised our kids, and I'm sitting there with my wife and I, and I'm like, how in the world? do they do it how in the world did she it's it's the grace of god right and so so and, and see that faith keeps you from giving up right that that, that faith you is faith is the is like abraham right all right i'm gonna make you father of many nations you see the stars you see all the sand that's how numerous your seed is going to be i need for you to go somewhere um where i'm going to give you a blessing now here's the catch um um, Abraham, where you going? I don't know. Well, why are you going? Because God told me. I'm putting my trust in the Lord. And so it's credited yeah. to him as righteousness, his faith. Did you hear that? I, I don't quite know where I'm going, but I know God is going to get me there and God is taking me there. Right? Hmm? Yes, yeah, so, so I'm putting my trust in God when it comes mm -hmm. to my faith. And so, like we said, faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I gave you that verse to sort of help and guide us is now we drop into Jeremiah because where the people are at this point in the book of Jeremiah is not good. It's looking bad. They, 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 they're, gonna, they're being invaded by what's called the Chaldeans or the Babylonians. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, which for those who, who, 
who have, have gone to Sunday school or grown up in the church, and, and, he, and, and, and they've been taken into captivity. They're in exile. They've seen the temple burn down. Okay, imagine that now. This temple where God, talking to Solomon centuries before, has said that he is, that's where he chose to be. The temple was the greatest thing for the people of God, that they would like make a pilgrimage to the temple. It was a big deal just to come to the temple. They were happy. And, and, and to get to the temple wasn't always easy. They had to go up a hill, up mountains and stuff. And but but now the temple is gone, is is burned down, the gates have been destroyed. And, and for those who understand um biblical times in ancient times, the gates are what help protect the city. There's no more protection for the city. And now the people have been put into exile because they've not been faithful. And now it looks and they're gonna be there. For 70 some years, if I remember correctly, is it 70 some? Was it 40 some? I may be wrong. Uh, I think it's, 70. yeah, it's 70 years, right? Yeah, 70 years that they're going to be out of the promised land in captivity. And now the people are in a place where, okay, let's talk about faith. Let's talk about how much you trust God, right? Because it's one thing to trust God when everything is going well. It's one thing, you know, it's easy to trust God when we have a lot of money in the bank, we can pay our bills, there's nothing wrong with our health, you know, everybody like us, you know, um, that, that, that's easy, you, it, it's easy when you get everything you want, but it's another whole story when we start talking about faith and trust in the Lord when things are not going your way, in fact, you know, every time you turn around there's another problem, have have you ever experienced that? You know, you thought you moved forward, but you man, I done taken a bunch of steps back. No matter, you can't seem to ever get a break. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on with the people of God today. They like, look, we can't get a break. Okay, and then on top of this, um, this is God who allowed it. So now, how do we? How does our faith work and our hope when what we're going through? God has let happen, that God is aware. God knows. In this case, they're being punished. Okay, that, that's our context tonight for our pastors. They, they can set us and guide us. Because um, we see, as you read in verse 15, right? It's, this is a verse that's also quoted um, in the Gospel of Matthew. If you remember, verse 15, thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Okay, remember that that, that verse is quoted in the book of Matthew. <coughs> Does anybody remember when it's quoted? Yeah. Okay, Miss Nikki showed up. She's in the house tonight. So, so she said, I know. Okay, so, so, so tell us, when is that verse quoted? What's going on in the Gospel of Matthew when it's quoted? Herod was trying to kill who he, the next king. So Jesus was the king that was promised. And uh, he had heard from the wise men that there was a new king and uh, they wanted to go see him. They wanted to go worship him. And um, those wise men didn't come back because they were warned in the dream, don't go back that way, go another way. And um, so since they didn't return, Herod was angry and he wanted to destroy whoever could be the next king. And so he killed all the children like two years and under. And uh, the angel warned uh, Mary and Joseph to go another way to, they went to Egypt and told them to go that, that way so that uh, go to Egypt and stay there for a while because God knew what was happening. And so they averted the destruction by King Herod. And so the, the, the weeping that was occurring was because so many people had lost their children. They were killed by Herod. And, 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 they, and, and, and they went to Egypt, as, Nick, as Nikki said. And on top of this, in, our, in Jeremiah, when they was first, the city was sacked, Jerusalem, guess where the people went? They tried to go, Egypt. 
Okay, so this is a prophetic mm. scripture, a prophetic where it's not just it happened in the time of Jeremiah, but it's a prophetic word of what would also happen when the Messiah would come. Okay, so it's, so this is considered a messianic scripture. But now, can you imagine a, a more hopeless situation than a mother losing her child? Mm -mm. Right? Let's just keep it, or even worse, mothers losing their children. Uh -huh. The children of the children are being murdered. Because when the Babylonians came in, you got to go read. You can read it when you get some time um, <laughs> later tonight or to, or over next week. You read the book of um, um, Habakkuk, and you see Babylon um, Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans or the Babylonians didn't play, so children were being killed. Um, some some even said they would even take the mother, the children out of the womb about to be born. Huh. Can you imagine a more, like say, a more hopeless situation? Children are being um, put to death. So and and look at what's going on. But he didn't say just any mother was weeping. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. I need to back up a little bit. Rama, Rama is a place that's about three miles north of Jerusalem. Just so you know. Okay, and Rama was not that far from the tomb of Rachel. Okay, now Rachel was the wife of who? Now we're going back to our Bible. Who was Rachel? The Jacob. Jacob. She married Jacob, right? And between Jacob and Leah and the, um, the maid servants, you get the 12 tribes of Israel. Who's Israel? Who, Jacob. Who is Jacob, you got it. Right, Jacob is known, his name means trickster, but then when he gets the new name after wrestling with God, he said, I'm gonna call you Israel, right? And it's because he says, I've contended with you, that God is contended with his, will contend with the, 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 the offspring of Jacob, who's the, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So now look what's happening. Rachel, who's one of the mothers of the faith, because Jacob is also considered one of the fathers of the faith. You see, he's mentioned in the Bible is now they're saying that she's losing children. So now look at this. Now we're talking about the faithful. You see this, the people of God, there were many of the people who had not been faithful, were not doing right. But what about when you're doing the right thing and you being faithful to God, you serving God, everybody else, some other people not doing right, but you're doing right. And then you start having problems and you in what seems like a hopeless situation. What, how, how does that make you feel, Sister Donna? <laughs> you, you doing the right thing, you following God and then you can't catch a break, you having problems. Well, sometimes it sometimes um, discourages you, but then when you realize um, he has a reason for bringing you through it so that you can help someone else. Mm. See, see, that's pulling on, we can put on scripture for that, right? Romans chapter eight, verse 28. All things work to the good of those who love the oh, Lord and are called to his purposes, right? And that's in the context of persecution that could happen to the people of God in Romans chapter eight, right? And then he says, it's the people who he called. In verse 29, he started talking about the ones who he called. He predestined. This is about the people of God. So now we have a passage here in verse 15 where he's saying, look, this is the woman of God, the mothers of the faith, the, the women of God who are doing the right thing because other people were not being faithful. Look, calamity has happened. It looks like a hopeless situation, okay? The kind of thing that can cause some people to start to question their faith. My kid is gone. Right, and this is important for us in, in the body of Christ, and 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 for those, for us who put our trust in the Lord, because sometimes you know when people go through issues and challenges, they don't all the time need a pat answer. You know, we we just tell them, look, just pray on it. God will bring you through it. Well, they they got something going on that's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You know, they have an issue that's happening that's serious. They it, it shakes their faith. And, and, and we have to be able, when we engage people, to not just brush aside difficult situations that happen to the people of God who are faithful, right? Because it used to be back in the day, if something is happening to somebody all the time, right, who go to church, what, who was a Christian, what would we always say? They go to church every Sunday, but they always got problems going on. What would we always say? I'll pray for you. 
Okay, now, okay so, so Sister Donna said, I'll pray for you. Okay, so we got Sister Donna said, she'll pray for you. Now what, that's one thing that people say. Is it anything else that people say besides I'll pray for you? They start thinking. They'll say, where's your faith? Okay, they'll ask them, where's your faith? You really? need to trust the Lord. Are you serious, Donna? <laughs> Do they ask you that? <laughs> well, some people will say if you're going through something and you and they feel like you're not trusting in God, they'll remind you who, who is your God? Why are you? Where's your faith? Oh, okay. They they use one of Jesus's lines, huh? Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, remember, you in know, you know. Uh, and it, it, for a while, I had some challenges when uh, dealing with a situation, you know, uh, when one of my children was sick and uh, I was told that it was God's will. Mm. And, and for a while, because I was being told that, and I'm like, and then I was also told, well, the reason that's happening is because something you all did in the family there you go. and um i'm like and and i know you don't remember because you were way 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 too young but i for a minute i'm like if god's gonna take my baby and punish my baby for something i did or something his daddy did i just don't know if i can continue to 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 worship I, I and for a while for about a year i wouldn't um I, I just didn't understand how you could do that to my baby he didn't do anything to you so why would you do something like that to a baby so i had to get some spiritual counseling mm -hmm. and get teaching about why we have sickness and health you know because of what happened happened, you know, back during the time of, of Adam and Eve. And I had to really get to a place where I had to grow in my face and realize that they should have told me that because that was not true, first of all. But I didn't know. I was very, very young. I didn't know any better. Um, but that is sometimes what people will say, and they need to stop that. Don't tell people that kind of foolishness. And now notice what we've all said, what, what, what you all have said. Have faith. You need to trust the Lord. You need to pray. Or you know what? You must have did some or somebody in your family. You see, and, 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 and this, you know, we know in the gospel according to John chapter nine, remember the, the blind man, they said, well, who, who sinned? Was it mm -hmm. him or his parents? He must be blind because somebody sinned. Mm -hmm. Because people believe that only bad things or challenges in life only came to people who were sinning against God. Yeah. You, you, you follow me here? Did this is deep because um, in our passage, but what was the end of that? Oh, oh I'm sorry. But, 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 but they said, but, but, but Jesus said, no, this is for the works of God to be seen, the glory of God to be seen. Mm -hmm. And this is deep. Now watch this now. So he says, essentially, you, we go through things for God's glory to be shown, mm -hmm. for, for, for God to get glory in the situation, right? And, and not everything that happens to people that's not good or bad is because they sin. Right. Not everybody gets, gets put out their home because they don't pay their bills. Mm -hmm. and, because, and not everybody loses their job because they did something wrong on the job. That's right. You know, some people might lose their job because they're standing for the Lord and they got a high level of ethics. Okay. Mm -hmm. not, 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 not everybody who gets sick or get diabetes is because they were smoking and drinking and stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and, 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 and so and so, so we got to be careful because this in this passage here, he's, he lifts up Rachel to make a point. This is the mother of the faith, one of the mothers of the faith. These are faithful people. So in other words, <laughs> Um, problems, difficult situations happen to godly people. That's the point, right? That's the first point. Difficult challenges, problems in life happens to um, godly people. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, in this life, you will face trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer because mm -hmm. I've overcome the world, right? So, so, mm -hmm. so rather than saying, okay, well, you've been blessed 
because you don't have no problems, we might want to start thinking, well, maybe you are also being blessed even when you have problems because God will keep you through them and God will get glory in those problems. Yes. Right? It, Remember Lazarus? Mm -hmm. Right? Lazarus. <clears throat> well, 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 this is this is for God. This is for God. He said he, he asked the sister, like, do do you believe? Do do you believe mm -hmm. um, um um Martha? Do you believe? This is for the glory of God to be seen. In uh, Paul says it in Romans chapter five, we glory in our sufferings. Yeah. Okay. Knowing that 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 that, that this develops um, perseverance, develops character. Character develops. Here it is, hope, mm -hmm. and hope not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out on us. Huh? You see, mm -hmm. I'm blessed as as um. As um, Fred Hammond would say, which he got out of the, got out of the book of De Deuteronomy, I'm blessed <coughs> in the city. I'm blessed in the valley, right? I can be blessed on the mountaintop. Yeah. I can be blessed yeah. in the rain. Mm -hmm. In the field, when we come, field, we go. blessed in your coming and your going. Okay, so mm -hmm. a lot of people experience difficult situations, even what right. appears to be hopeless situations. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now watch this. But look what the Lord says, though. Um, look, look, look what God <laughs> he, he, he says, look, um, you think this is really bad. Well, look what the Lord says. Keep your voice from weeping and your eyes, mm. verse 16, and your eyes from tears. Look at this. For there is a reward for your work, declares the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. Now look, look at that. Mm. He says, "Well, guess what? There's a reward for your faithfulness." Mm. He, he says, God, "God can bring you back." Yeah. Or as he says, "But He'll restore the years of the canker worm." Oh yeah. You see, you see, we 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 should never think it's over. We should never even think that we are too old or it's too late that God cannot resurrect um, situations in our life. We we should we, we should give up. I mean, we should not give up on family. We should not give up on people um, praying for them and, 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 and encouraging them to come to know the Lord, to, to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because he says, look, 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 you, I can bring you back. I will bring them back from the land. You, you hear that? He says, look, wipe your eyes. In other words, he says, look, you need to stop spending so much time having a pity party and look at me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, um, I'm reading a book right now that I have to read. Um, that, that, that's called The Power of a Positive Team, right? And it makes the point about the power of positivity versus negativity. If we focus so mm -hmm. much on what's wrong, we can never see what's good that's going on, right? You ever felt that way? You got so caught up in what was wrong that you can see what was right. What was so good. And we'll do that sometimes. We get caught up in that in church, right? We'll sit there and be so focused on what went, quote, not the way we thought it should go in the worship service that we failed to see how the Holy Spirit moved in the service, mm. right? And, 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 and you know that negativity, it, it saps your energy, right? As, as, as the author Gordon says in that book I told you about, that it, it pulls you down. And look what God is saying. He said, look, 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 you need to wipe your eyes, stop crying, um, wipe away your tears for there's a reward for your work. God is not forgetting what you did, right? The old psalmist would say, only what you do for the Lord will last, right? He's saying, look, I'm going to remember you. I'm not going to forget you. That's something that keeps resonating through the book of Jeremiah is God has not forgotten about you. For those online, those here, right here in Bible study, right here today, virtually on Zoom, God has not forgotten about your situation. No matter how bad it has gotten, no matter how hopeless it may look, God has not forgotten. Okay? He, he says, I remember your work, yes. your faithfulness, you know, serving me. That's why he lifts up Rachel. You know, that's a mother of the faith. But that's a word that's speaking to anybody who's been walking faithfully with the Lord and wondering why I'm going through what I'm going through. Why is this like the evil people keep going forward and prof prospering as it talks about in the book of Proverbs and I'm losing and I'm suffering. God will 
remember your work. God has a reward for your work. And here's what's deep. Jeremiah is not, in this context, he's not talking about when you die and go to heaven. God will reward you for your faithfulness even now. In, mm -hmm. in other words, it, it pays to do what's right. Mm. <laughs> it, it pays to do what's right. It, it, it pays to hold out and, and be holy and do things God's way. God will reward you for it. Right? You'll spend your whole life trying to build your, a good reputation and taking one shortcut, cutting some corners, and can tear it down with one act. Mm -hmm. Right, people can lose it all, get to the end of life and get to the finish line and destroy a reputation. He says, look, I will reward you for your work. Mm -hmm. So now look what God says. So then he says, there's hope in your future, the class of the Lord. See, that's why I had the title for tonight. That's why I got it from, it's right from the Bible, it's right here. There's hope in your future. I gotta mm -hmm. ask myself, oh, why is there hope in my future, God? Why are you telling me that there's hope in my future God, why is there hope? You saying the children shall come back to their own country. They'll come back. That means he's saying you coming back. They coming back to the promised land. You will come back from this. That's hope. Yeah. You can come back, right? And we love comeback stories, right? We, we love those comeback stories. I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I love my hometown Falcons, but I gotta give credit to the Patriots when they played them in the Super Bowl a few years ago. I sat there, Nikki went to bed. I was jumping up and down because the, 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 the Falcons was blowing out the Patriots. Yeah. They were blowing them out. That was the last thing they, I heard. Nikki went to bed. <laughs> and, and I started crying when I saw it happen in the third quarter. They came yep. back. Came back. The, the Falcons. Yeah. After halftime, it was gone. Right, yeah. time. Come back. Remember, remember when the the Red Sox was down zero four, um, back in um like two thousand eight or somewhere around there, and was became the first team to come back from an 0 four deficit. Mm. Remember the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron brought them their first championship. They came back and won three games straight, down yes. three one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Comebacks. He says, "Look, you're gonna come back." That's what, because he says, look, your future looks brighter because you got me. That's what God's saying. You got me on your side. Oh, you, yeah. You're going to come back from this. Okay. Um, so he's going to, yes. Yes. So, um, I know Sister Nikki knows and probably Donna. Um, we lost our first child. So I absolutely understand what your mom is talking about. That was said to me. I did. I did walk out of the church. Mm. And then luckily I found B can. Actually, my husband found me again and mm -hmm. brought me or kind of coerced me to come. I'll be honest. And we were blessed by one of the ladies at the church who have gone through the same thing. And this is the verse that she told to me. And she was absolutely right <laughs> because we were eventually blessed. Well, we were blessed already with our daughter. Mm -hmm. And I remember being told by other people at the time because I didn't want to hear it that you know it is god's will however it was for the good of her suffering mm -hmm. and she was needed with jesus mm -hmm. but it was for his will for the good but in there will be blessings of the future wow and that was what mm -hmm. that was that is one of the biggest verses she kept reminding me with um versus jeremiah 31 16 Mm -hmm. um and 17 yep there's hope for your future it's one of my favorite verses because of it no matter what happens I, I look at this and remember no matter what you go through because i think that might be one of the worst things to go through a death of a child mm -hmm. but they say regardless of whatever happened when my father passed away real quick i went right back to that verse and kept talking saying it and saying it and mm -hmm. saying it and mm -hmm. saying it and pressing that little button that kept on my bible app that kept talking you see, so when i didn't um, want to hear it i heard the voice but, but you see again yeah. positive and this is not pie in the sky mm. thing and this is god <clears throat> yeah spirit led um mm -hmm. reflection because he's saying look godly people mm -hmm. face trials that's the mm -hmm. first thing we learn mm -hmm. he says, yep. look but 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 look but it's still god will bring us back he will bring you back god yeah. will deliver you from it. So you have hope in your future. He said, see mm -hmm. that hope now. He says, look, I got hope 
because of what God can do. See, hope means it's not done yet. Mm -hmm. There's hope for your future, right? That means it hasn't happened yet, but I can see it. Now, you had some people will say, I see you in your future and you look better than you look today. They used to say stuff like that. The, the, the point is, you know what? You, it looks better. It's going to be better. There's hope for your future. There's something good that can happen in your future. Okay, we want to we, we want to have that, that kind of spiritual maturity when it comes to our children, mm -hmm. our nieces, our nephews, our grandkids, because sometimes when you're in the midst of the stuff, guess what? You looking like, man, what you say stuff like, you're going to be just like so-and-so. You're going to be just like, and we, that's not hope. You know, we, we, um, 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 we, 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 we don't never say you're going to be just like Jesus, right? We don't say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> just like so-and-so. You, you see, 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 there's hope in your future. You, see, when you, you know what? You, you're going to become a fine woman, a man of God one day. You're going to become a faithful yeah. follower of Jesus Christ. You see, there's hope in your future. Because remember, they talk about our kids, by the way, the, the offspring of the children of Israel, the ones who are going to come after them. But watch, this pushes you some further. But look, so, so there's hope in your future. God will bring you back. There's going to be a comeback. I like the psalmist said, J.J. Harrison, after this, there's going to be some glory. Um, you know, like, like, like Jesus said, you know, when he looked at Lazarus, he said, well, this is, oh, oh no, do you believe in the resurrection? No, I'm talking about right now. No, he's, he, he's going to be resurrected. This is for the glory. Of he, what did he say? I'm glad that Lazarus died. You know what? I'm glad that he died for the glory of God to be revealed. Now, think oh. about that now. God get excited. Jesus is saying, I'm glad because of what God is about to do and how awesome, how great it will be, right? I quote it all the time in 1 Corinthians chapter two, eyes, which comes out of the book of Isaiah. Eyes are not seen, ears are not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of man, the plans they have for him who love it. Now, I haven't told you the context of that. The context is they talking about the people who crucified Jesus. They just didn't understand what they was doing. So mm -hmm. folks may say something to you, thinking you're not blessed because you're going through some challenges. Oh, no, you just ain't seen. You, it hasn't entered into your mind what God has for me because I love the Lord. Amen. Okay? So now, push this. So, we say, so now, but look, it gets better than that, though. By the time we get to verse 18, look what he says. I have heard Ephraim grieving. Um, you have disciplined me. I was disciplined like an untrained calf. Bring me back that I may be restored, for you are the Lord, my God. Okay, he goes further to say, you know, I turned away from you, but I relented. And after I was instructed, he said, I started striking myself. I started, when, when, when the last time you seen a child disciplining himself? He said, I started disciplining myself after I came to my senses. And then, and then he said, I was ashamed. I was confounded because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Okay, now look at this verses 18 through 19, you got to understand who's Ephraim. Now, now for my Bible scholars out there, who's Ephraim? Now, and it can't be menacing. Who, who, who's Ephraim? Who knows who Ephraim is today? You got, you got to go back to Genesis when you've learned about Ephraim for the first time. Who's Ephraim? Who's Ephraim's father? Adam. Not Adam. Got to go forward. Who's father was Jack? Who? Oh, somebody I said a J. I heard a J. I thought it was Jacob, wasn't it? Oh, guess what? It's Jacob, Jacob is or Israel is Ephraim's grandfather. So who's his dad? Uh, you got you got one out of 12 choices you can pick from. It's 12 tribes yeah. in Israel. So who is Ephraim's dad? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. He 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 showed up in Egypt. And had to save the family. He ended up in Egypt and had to save the family. The family, his brothers tried to, was going to kill him. They sold him off into slavery. Joseph. And he ended up in Joseph. 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 Guess what? So in, Eph in, in um, Egypt, he had two kids. Manasseh was oh. the first. Ephraim oh. was the second. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this now. Manasseh was the one, because he's the oldest, that's supposed to get the blessing when um, Israel or Jacob was about to die. It's in Genesis. Wasn't and he the hairy, the hairy son? 
Nope. We supposed no, to no, be no, the first no, one. No, 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 okay. no. Harry's son yep. is Esau. That's that's uh, his father. Okay. Ooh, we we getting Bible tonight. See, see, that's that Esau is Jacob's brother. He Esau is um is Ephraim's uncle. You know, I got that right? No, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm yeah. sorry. Great uncle. Yeah, cause great uncle. He's his great uncle. Okay, so so watch this now. Manasseh is supposed to get the blessing, get the inheritance, because he's the oldest. When Jacob or Israel is about to die in the book of Genesis, he says, bring my grandsons to me, Joseph, because I want to bless them. I want to, and, and so when, when Joseph brings both of the grandsons, Jacob or Israel is old where he can't see. Mm. So he gets ready to take Ephraim's hand in blessing, but then Joseph tries to switch it and tries to give him um, Manasseh's hand, because he's like Manasseh's supposed to get the blessing, but then Ephraim, I mean Israel, who's blind, crosses his arm and then blesses um, Ephraim. He puts him in the position of honor to make the point about, again, God's providence and God's grace. Because he says, look, now watch this. Ephraim is showing out. Ephraim is the children of God now, and he says, well, guess what? I'm going to bless you, even though you don't deserve it. Look, look at this, you, you go through it, and guess what? I'm so good that I've not forgotten about you. You in this situation, the people, because of the fault of the people not being faithful, I'm still gonna show you grace. I thought it was interesting mm -hmm. how, here how it says, Ephraim is my firstborn. There we go. Um, <laughs> whereas Ephraim- Is the second born. For Joseph, he was actually the second born. So for God, he's saying, He's my firstborn son. So look at that. So now Ephraim, the way God see you is like his firstborn. I, I told you about that on Sunday. He sees you like a firstborn. Ephraim is not actually the firstborn. It's Manasseh. But God sees him. He sees his people like they're a firstborn child. He, he operates in, in, in biblical ancient times. The firstborn is everything. And now that ought to make you feel good right there. He says, you get everything. It, it, the first point, he says, you're my firstborn. He says, look at this. You know what? You done got on my last nerve. He says, I've often had to speak against him, but I didn't forget about it. See, he says, I've had to correct him, but I didn't forget about him. That's verse 20. I still remember him. Look at this. Look at this. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, the class of the Lord. Now, now, now we can relate to this when we've had somebody in our life that we love dearly has done mm -hmm. something wrong to us, but we still love yeah. them and we don't forget about them. We let them know, but we love them so much. It tends to be somebody who's in your immediate family and you love them so much that you do what? Mm -hmm. you give them. Yeah. You give them. You don't forget. There you go. I look, 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 but I don't forget. Oh Lord, that's coming from Maryland. That's not like some Maryland talk. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I forgive him, but I don't forget. You know, but, but look at the image. He said, look, you're my firstborn. I correct you. I speak against you. I will let this happen. But guess what? I still remember you. And you ought to thank um, them, but that God don't forget when you're going through stuff. Right? The song yeah. is weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. No, God I'm, I'm, does I'm, not forget. Uh -huh. And then he goes further. He says, look, he said he showed out in his youth because you know we can we can he's talking about the children of Israel, the young nation, but we can also the imagery is when we're young, we're not that wise. Right? Mm -hmm. He says, look, right. he, he, because I bore the disgrace of my youth. That's what Ephraim says about himself. We can all look back on our life when we were younger and we weren't as wise as we think we are now, right? It's some stuff that we know we did when we were young. We look back and wait, what was I thinking? You know, you don't think I'm right. Go to one of your class reunions and that person you thought you loved and you supposed to go marry. You're like, what was I thinking? You know, we're not that wise <laughs> in our youth, right? We, we do some stuff. We'll mess up our credit. We fool around with people. We act like life is forever. Make all kind of reckless decisions. He says, look, he, he says, I've come to a place where I recognize that I bore the disgrace of my youth. He's accepting responsibility. And then look what God says. Well, guess what? You, my dear son, you, you're you my darling child. Wow. God calls us his dear children, his darling child, 
Even when we are dead in our sins, even when we are wrong, we've not been faithful and walking with God. He says, you're still my darling child. Now, now when the last time you had to correct um, a child or a nephew or somebody and you was correcting them and saying, you my darling child still, I still love you. You know, in fact, in fact we say it this way. This hurt, we say it like this. This is hurt me more than it's hurting you, right? That's what, that's what the Lord is saying right here in the passage today to his people. This is hurt me more than it's hurt you. Oh, I know it looks hopeless, but you're my darling child. I'm not going to forget about you, even though I have to correct you. Look at this. My heart yearns for you to be with me. John Calvin would call this irresistible grace when we study systematic theology. God loves you so much that you just can't um, resist him. He loves you into the kingdom of God, right? It's grace that's brought us into the kingdom of God. Some of us know it's God's grace that when we heard the gospel preach and we came to know Jesus Christ, had tears in our eyes, God loved us into the kingdom. We didn't earn our way in the kingdom. It wasn't our holiness that got us in the kingdom. It was God's grace. Grace. He loved us, right? And we, we he, he's loved us. And he's like, he says in this passage, you're my darling child. He said, I still remember it. He says, my heart yearns for him. And I think that's what God's heart yearns for people to love God the way God deserves to be loved. Mm -hmm. I, 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 as Paul says in, in Romans chapter eight, um, creation groans, it waits in eager anticipation for the sons of man mm -hmm. to be revealed. That's Bible, that's New Testament. Mm -hmm. Now saying the same, Thing that God yearns. That's why it says in Luke 15, it's joy in heaven over what? One sinner mm. who repents. And over 99 of God gets excited. God is yearning for people to come back to him, to come into relationship with him, to recognize mm -hmm. he loves them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 he, it, it's not that we the, we, we're not the cream of the crop, but God treats us like we're the cream of the crop. He loves us like with the cream, cream of the crop. So look what he says. He says, look, don't give up. You're going through this. Don't throw in the towel. Your future looks brighter. Come to your senses and recognize your sin. I'm not forgetting about you. You still my darling. So guess what? Don't get down on yourself. Don't put your head between your legs and put your head in the sand and act like it's over. No, God said, I still love you. So we should never think that I... That when we've sinned and when we've fallen short of the glory, we should never think that's the end. Mm -hmm. He says, you're still my darling. I still love you. And so he says, look, so you need to set some markers for yourself. Make yourself some guideposts so you can consider your way to come back to me. Now, look what he's saying. But look, but look how he talks. He says, return to me, mm -hmm. virgin Israel. Return to these your cities. Now what God is saying, I need for you to have a change of mind, a change of heart. Because I want you, when you come back to me, you I'm calling you a virgin, right? We know virgin means what? Well, what, what does virgin mean? Now, this is it. This pure. Nobody want to answer. Pure. 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 No, don't worry, yeah. Pure, right? We like to use pure, right? It, it means when people will hear this, it means you ain't never had sex. That's what they would have heard. <laughs> That's what they would have they heard. They wouldn't have even say it pure. They would have said, well, he's talking to them as if they never had sex. What he's saying is you have never been unfaith. He's calling you back and he's forgiving them where he does. Watch this. I'm going to blow your mind. Dig, dig and rise. Well, I'm not going to remember what you did in the past. And therefore, I see you as a virgin. Woo. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> He says, I'm not holding this against you, mm -hmm. right? I, but, but also what's implied is a change of mind, change of heart. You know, a Romans 12 um, experience, chapter, chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, right? Um, By the tender mercies of God, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Watch it. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed of the renewing your mind. I need for you to come mm -hmm. back to me where you like a virgin. Mm -hmm. You new. You brand new. Mm -hmm. Nobody ain't touch you. That's how God 
seasons. That, that's why when we see in John chapter three, when he's talking to Nicodemus, he said, you don't understand this? You go out, unless you be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Gotta be made brand new. Okay, uh -huh. that, this is a holy, this is a spiritual thing that has to happen, a spiritual renewal that has to happen. That's why mm -hmm. we, we're coming to the close now. As you read the rest of this chapter, that's why he says, I'm going to give them a new covenant. That's why he says that you're no longer going to have to call people your shepherds and, and say, follow this person. You, you're going to follow God yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to need them because he's saying you're going to be renewed spiritually. Okay. Um, so he says, look, you need to make your way back to me. Make some God posts. That means you know what? Coming to God leads to transformation. It leads to change. There's, he says, you need to put some markings down. You need to make your way back to me. Consider well the highway, the road by which you went. Remember what your life used to be like. Wow. <laughs> he, he says, I need for you to remember what your life used to be like. So that's why we don't need to sit up there and try to act like with the young people, we've been holy and, and we've never done anything wrong. He said, you need to remember right. that thing. He says, in fact, put some God posts up that you never forget the way right. you used to be and how far I brought you. Mm -hmm. Why does God do that? Why does he want us to remember where he's brought us from? Because why does he want you not to never forget that? Deacon Rob. Because he's a loving rock, God. He's a loving God? Yes. Also to be gracious to other people because you've received the grace of God and so you can extend that to other people. You know that God mm. has changed you. You know that he's had mercy on you. You know he's forgiven you. He loves you. Mm. So you can share that love with others. You can share that grace, that mercy, that forgiveness. You see, he yeah. said, I don't want you to forget what I did for you. I don't want you to show up at church on Sunday. You know, you go to the, you go to the store, you go to Nordstrom or somewhere, and you get or Marshalls with a where they got some Nordstrom stuff from the rack, and you got your new dress on, your new suit, and you forget how far that I brought you from. Guess what? Your righteousness is like filthy rags. Mm. He says, "Look, don't forget where yeah. I brought you from." He says, "I want mm -hmm. you to remember it." And then look what he says, because he says, "I'm gonna do something new." Look at this. But he says, "How long will you waver?" Verse 22, oh, faithless daughter. See, see, look at this. They haven't put their trust in the Lord. How long are you going to waver? Remember uh, uh, Elijah with the Baal people talking to you, God? How long are you going to waver between these two worlds? If Baal be God, follow Baal. If God be God, follow God. Make a choice. He says, right. look, choose ye this day whom you will serve, as Joshua right. said, right? Um, well, whether it's the God of your fathers, your forefathers, well, as for me and my house, we're going to serve. Oh. Look at this. For the Lord has created a new thing on earth, a woman in circles of man. Now, now this messed me up this week with this. I was trying to understand this. Now, this is what he just said. He got God. What he's going to do is so extraordinary. It's so out of the norm that you know God did it, that he uses an illustration as if a woman in circles of man. And you got to understand ancient times. See, ancient times, the woman didn't encircle the man. The man encircled the woman. The man was checking out the woman because the woman, the man was supposed to be courting the woman. Now, I know times unchanged. I know uh, we want to do stuff. We want to do Dutch and all that kind of stuff we like to do. And, but I'm old school. So, so I'm, a, I'm of that mode, you know, open the doors and, you know, you go on yeah. and you, 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 if you can't afford to take out, then don't, you, you shouldn't be dating. You know, but but he says, look, what God is about to do is so radical that it's the woman pursuing the man. <laughs> now, like, I'm telling y'all to go try to do that now, but I'm just with the Bible. <laughs> that the woman is pursuing the man. Y'all know I used to be back in the day. If you was yeah. trying to be the man, that was like that wasn't good. I had never been on that page. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, it's <laughs> normal. But he's saying it's going to be as if the woman is courting the man. He's just trying to say, make the point. What God is going to do is so radical. It's so extraordinary. Oh, you you need to put your hope in the Lord. Everybody says, I see your, 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 your future. There's hope in your future. 
It's so awesome mm -hmm. what God can do, and will do. do for those mm -hmm. who are faithful, for those who turn back to the Lord. Right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, there's hope in your future. Because you should yes. not, godly people face challenges, yes. but God does not forget about them. He does not forget about mm -hmm. you. God sees you as the apple of his eye, even on your worst day. And God is yearning for us, for you, me, to be with him. God treats us like we are the firstborn. You see, it? he treats you like a virgin, like you untouched. Okay? You got to remember the virgin was who, when the man got ready to get married, he wanted. He wanted a virgin. They supposed to have a virgin that was honorable. And he's saying, "Look at you, 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 my prize. You're, you what Jacob did, fourteen years worth of work for." <laughs> he's saying that's the people of God. Wow. Do you have any questions? Beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <clears throat> All right. Well, well, if if there's um if there's not any other questions, we will take our prayer requests. Um, what I'll do tonight, what are we gonna do? We'll let Minister Nikki close us in prayer tonight. So so, so let's take our, our prayer requests. You know, we're right at the church tonight. We up here in the office. <clears throat> we can <we're> tell <laughs> the church today. Yeah. Hint, hint, <clears throat> hint, when we, we hint, hint what's coming at some point soon. Yeah. So, <laughs> so but, but but let's receive the prayer request. For, <clears throat> go ahead, Donna. No, go ahead. For Sarah, she is leaving tomorrow afternoon for her youth conference. They're going to you to New York overnight. Mm -hmm. And then they're heading to Pennsylvania and okay. back late Sunday night. So traveling mercies. Man, they going on the gauntlet. They're going to go to New York <laughs> and then go to Pennsylvania. Wow. And I guess it's a Sunday. trip up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Is it a bus trip? Yeah. That's right. Nope. They're driving. Oh, driving. Okay. 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 I get out of work early tomorrow to bring her. So. Any other prayer requests? For my um, my friend Sharon, she um, ended up back in the hospital on Sunday. She's the one that had her toe amputated. Mm -hmm. And I guess she got an mm -hmm. infection in the bone. Mm -hmm. So she had to go back in and they had to do some more surgery on it and um, remove, I guess, probably the infection. And then they um, going to have it tested and stuff. But just, um, she said she's doing, she texted me and said she was, um, doing good, but just to still keep her in prayer. And my cousin Lynn um, got in touch with her doctor um, this week. And so she went in and had some blood work done. And then they're going to um, check again to see if maybe the cyst has grown and then go from there what they're going to do. Okay. To keep her in prayer. Okay. Your cousin Lynn. Okay. Mm -hmm. and any other prayer requests? Yeah, me. I I chronic pain. Okay. Okay. So keep Deacon Roz in prayer over the pain, the chronic pain. And let's remember this, this uh, uh Mother Pearl. I was about to tell you. She, doesn't, she doesn't. She doesn't like you to make over her, but she she does need prayer. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna tell you. I got the message, but I'm gonna I'm breaking. I'm breaking pro protocol. We're gonna pray for because I'm following the Bible, James five. Prayers of the right. So we're going to pray for Mother Pearl. Um, we need to pray for mm -hmm. her. Any other prayer requests? Let's continue to keep um, Brother Dodd and, um, and, and Deacon mm -hmm. Pat in prayer. Keep Brother Charlie and, and Deacon S. Jerry in prayer. Um, mm -hmm. Sister Holland, I saw her at church um, Sunday. Sister um, Tilly, continue to keep all of them in prayer. Um, sister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sister. Um, Florinda. Sister Flor Flor Florinda in prayer. Deacon Field. Yeah. Um, please, Deacon Al. Deacon Al, he on tonight. Hey, Deacon Al, again, 
Right. <laughs> and and um, Deacon Priscilla, Sister Sneed, um, any other prayer requests that, that we need, or, any, or, or anybody we're getting. Well, since you them? since you mentioned Deacon Phil, I have to tell you something. He finally um, got his his car keys taken away from him. And he's not very happy about it. So just pray that he doesn't, know, doesn't have, take it out on his son too much. I, I, but his doctors I, told him they don't want him driving anymore. His brother has told him. So his son finally took the keys away and I, he's kind of mad at him. Well, you just make sure that you, make sure you tell your uncle that the pastor was not the one who said anything about his driving. Uh, his son. I, that was not me who told him. It was not me. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Any other prayer? Yeah, we gotta pray for Deacon Field out. You go, man, yeah. Love yeah. Bobby. You know, you take the keys, they take it in their independence yeah. and they feel, you know, lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta hope you you gotta hope that your mm -hmm. cousin um knows about the spare set and the other spare set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told him just to get rid of the car, then he'll have nothing to drive. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Sister Bates, didn't she travel? Yeah, this is Sister Bates in prayer. She yeah. Traveled. She traveled. Um, who Sister else? Mary Lou and her husband. Yes, for his continued healing. Mm -hmm. It's all the young people. They're getting out of school now. It's, <clears> uh, keep, it's keeping them in prayer. for so They'll have a yeah. wonderful summer, fun summer, but also a safe summer. Godly summer. Mm -hmm. so, Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests? All right, the let's youth. Go. Yes, the youth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's keep our leaders in prayer. Of course, we want to continue to keep our leaders both national, state, as well as the local city level. Please. Amen. And in the church. And in the church, our church leaders. Yes. <laughs> yes. We thank the Lord for our church leaders. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Okay, let's close in prayer. All right. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've given us such a good word to meditate on, yeah. to remember the hope we have in you, God. The wonderful living hope in Jesus that never fades, Lord God. You are so good. Mm. Even though we may not see the hope all the time, you know that we know that there's always something to hope for, someone to hope in, mm. and it's you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for loving us with such a precious love that we just can't even imagine how much it is, Lord God. We thank you for these reminders that help us to see how undeserved that love is and how extravagant it is at the same time, Lord God. Um, and help us love others with that love, that wonderful, magnificent love that you've given us, Lord. Help us to extend mercy and grace and forgiveness following in your footsteps, Jesus, because you've done so much for us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for living for us and giving us that eternal life where we can live for your glory. <clears throat> Thank you that our challenges are reason for us to glorify you and we can be able to see how good you are as you bring us out of them as well. Lord, thank you that we are able to study together, worship together, and live this life together by your grace, Lord. Lord, we bring all these different prayer requests, requests before you. Uh, Sister Sarah and Sister uh, Bates are traveling, Lord. Be with them and help them to travel safely to their destinations and back. Help Donna's. Uh, friend Sharon and our cousin Lynn with their health issues, with the hospitalizations and the surgeries that are upcoming and the cysts that um, Lynn has, Lord. Continue to comfort Deacon Roz with her chronic pain that she's been having, Lord. We know oh, that it's you. been a challenge for her, Lord God. You can bring her out, Lord. 
but sometimes yeah. we go through so lord help her as as she's going through lord god and be with her and ease the pain lord god and help her to, you, to, to get you. the the help that she needs lord god and if if the pain doesn't subside lord god we help it we ask that you would give her the strength to go through it to overcome mm -hmm. and to to be able to trust you in it lord god and whatever mother pearl is going through, help her as well lord god bless her mm -hmm. and her doctor that she prays for thank you for his uh service in her life and helping her with the different medications and service that he's given her as a another man of faith thank you lord and we also ask mm -hmm. that you would continue to bless and keep brother dodds uh, deacon pat sister deaconess charlie um uh, or or deaconess jerry and, and brother charlie sister holland sister tilly sister florinda Deacon Al, Deacon Priscilla, De uh, Deacon Phil, and um, Sister Bates, and all of them, Lord God, all of our seniors, and those who are mentioned and those who are not, Lord God, we know that you are a good God, and you brought them this far, and you will not leave them or forsake them. Help them to continue in this race that you've given them. Lord, we uh, ask that you would continue to help Sister Mary Lou as she supports her husband with the surgery and continue to bring healing to him. And also those, the children, Lord, help them to have a restful and godly summer, Lord God. We know that it, sometimes the, some of the children may not have that much to do, Lord God. Help them to um, give, give their time to good things and not just waste it away, Lord God. Help them to find good activities, help them to get into your word, help them to um, find ways they can serve or whatever it is. And even have some fun and relaxation just to recuperate from all the busyness of the year and this pandemic, Lord God. And also we ask that you would uh, give wisdom to our city and national leaders as well as our church leaders. Continue to be with us and help us, Lord, help us to persevere in you, Lord God. Help us to walk in your ways. Help us to keep on striving to help others and to serve and to as within the church, help others to mature, to become more like Jesus as we are maturing as well, Lord God. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. you all. That's evening. It's so good to see you. Now you can leave knowing, you know, it is hope in your future. So, so, so. Get up. You're a child of the king. Yeah. You're an heir. Yeah. Promises yeah. of Christ, we already have a big brother who's already gone before us. We got a cloud of witnesses looking down that's cheering us on in our faith as we walk with Jesus Christ. Um, I pray y'all just have a blessed, blessed evening. And definitely we'll see you soon. Okay. okay. Good night. Have a good night, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night. Good night Mom. Good night. Good night. Good night Mom. I'm looking forward to seeing you in August. Me too. <laughs> yes. okay. I can definitely wait to see you again too. Yes. 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 In person. Yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Good, good night. night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. All right. Go Hawks. Atlanta oh, Hawks. No, they're looking good. They're looking good. All right. Good yes. night. <laughs> good night.